The year is 1906, the very same year that SOS became the international distress signal, and like every year, Nobel Prizes were given out. This particular year, the Nobel Prize for Physiology and Medicine was shared between two people for their work on the structure of the nervous system. One of those people is Camillo Golgi, a name you may recognise from your biology classes due to the intracellular organelle named after him, the Golgi apparatus. The other was Santiago Ramón y Cajal, the first person of Spanish origin to win the prestigious award. Interestingly, the theories they had about the structure of the nervous system, you know, the prize that they shared, could not be more different, and of course, only one of them could be correct. But before we get into that, let's have a quick look at what a Nobel Prize even is. Alfred Nobel, claimed chemist, engineer and inventor, died in 1896 at the age of 63. And in his will, he specified that his fortune would be used to establish five Nobel Prizes. One in literature, one in physics, one in chemistry, one in peace, and the one we'll focus on here, the one in physiology and medicine. 94% of his wealth, around 31 million Swedish kroner, was given to this endeavour. Now, I can only track Swedish kroner inflation back to 1960, and that amount of money then is now worth £850 million pounds in today's money. So you can imagine, 1896 31 million Swedish kroner is certainly a lot of money and enough to set up five annual awards. But obviously, they don't just give these awards to anyone, and as per Nobel's instructions, these awards are given to those who offer the greatest benefit to mankind the previous year. These individuals do have to be nominated by someone else, it is worth mentioning. The Nobel panel don't have to read every single research article and whatnot in a given year. Though he died in 1896, due to some legal issues, the first set of Nobel Prizes were given out in 1901, and have done so every year ever since. Minus 49 exceptions across the five prizes, and those 49 exceptions are mostly due to war times. So, back to 1906. Well, actually, 1901. As I just mentioned, this was the first year of the Nobel Prizes, and Golgi was indeed nominated that very first year, and every subsequent year, until his time came five years later. During those years, he was sometimes nominated alongside Cajal, some nominated just Golgi, and some nominated just Cajal, but in 1906, it was decided that the two would share the prize. Now, at the time, there were two predominant theories regarding the structure of the nervous system the neuron theory and the reticular theory. Now, seeing as we call cells of the nervous system neurons, you can probably hazard a guess as to which of these was correct. Golgi was not the first individual to propose the reticular theory. That honour goes to Joseph von Gerlach. The basic description of the theory is that the nervous system is one continuous structure with, importantly, no gaps. And he proposed this theory in a chapter of Guide to the Teaching of Tissues of Humans and Animals. The issue here is that von Gerlach and other scientists at the time lacked both microscopes and staining techniques that allowed them to accurately discriminate between individual nerve cells, making it look like one continuous system and thus the basis of the theory. In 1873, Golgi published what became known as the Black Reaction, or Silver Stain, which allowed for more accurate visualisation of complete neurons and their many cellular extensions. Neural tissue is extremely fragile, so the first step is to harden it with potassium dichromate, which was nothing new at the time. This is then followed by immersion into silver nitrate, the two chemicals react, producing silver chromate, which appeared black on the cell membrane, thus giving the stain its name. Because only a small proportion of the cells actually become stained, it becomes easy to discriminate between individual cells without having to try and separate them by hand, which more often than not resulted in damage to the cells and incorrect conclusions. This was a revolutionary technique, and Golgi and his team went on to accurately describe structures throughout the cerebrospinal axis. Within the grey matter of the brain, however, a dense grouping of intertwined axons fused together at various points with the dendrites used to gather nutrients to support the cell was described, and for Golgi, this was irrefutable evidence supporting the reticular theory. 
However, as early as 1877 there was evidence contradicting the reticular theory, with those individuals supporting individual cell theory known as neuronites, and you'll never guess who Goldie's main opponent was, one Santiago Ramon y Cajal. Using Golgi's own black stain, Golgi found that nerve cells within birds were not one continuous body, but were individual cells with small gaps between them. We now call these gaps synapses. Another great debate between the two was the existence of what we know as Purkinje fibres, specialised conducting fibres found on the dendrites of neurons. Golgi and others, it's worth mentioning, presume these to be artefacts from the silver nitrate staining method, yet Cajal argued that this was not the case because one, they're only ever found on the dendrites, and two, even the adapted Golgi staining method that used mercury instead of silver shows these artefacts. Eventually, Cajal was able to show that these Purkinje fibres using a methylene blue staining method, and this conclusively disproved that these were artefacts from the silver. Their rivalry continued throughout the Nobel Prize ceremony and beyond. In his Nobel lecture, Goldie made a direct attack on Cajal's results, showing a diagram of a continuous nerve in the system. Nothing wrong with that, you might be thinking, except he described this figure as an exact reproduction after life. The rivalry continued long after the Nobel Prizes were given out, with Cajal eventually commenting, What a cruel irony of fate of pair, like Siamese twins united by the shoulders, scientific adversaries of such contrasting character. Ultimately, all of this was put to rest in the 1950s with the invention of the electron microscope which could clearly identify that the nervous system was made up of individual cells rather than it being one continuous body. Thus, the neuron theory was proved to be correct. As we wrap up, I do want to make it very clear that I do not think Golgi was undeserving of his Nobel Prize. After all, it was his method that allowed Cajal to make his discoveries. The former, in my opinion, was just a little too headstrong and seemed to refuse to believe that he could be wrong. It was just interesting that these two very different men, with two very different theories, shared the very same award. <laughs>